Hi guys and welcome, Knembon here. In today's video I will review and show a bunch of techniques you can use to build an elevator that can get you up the bedrock in the nether without the need of breaking it. In 1.13 breaking bedrock seems to be getting less possible as known ways of doing it are being removed while certain parts of the game mechanics are being reworked. As in all other cases I'm pretty sure it's all temporary, we'll find ways to do it, but there are multiple reasons why you wouldn't want certain blocks including bedrock to appear in certain locations, like for example with wither cages, for more effective mob farms or just for aesthetic reasons. But the most basic reason people seem to do it is just to get on top of the nether, either to build a simple gold farms that don't require a perimeter or by simply access the roof to easily move around the world via nether without the need of drilling all the tunnels. If that's why you need bedrock to break, just to get on top of the nether, you shouldn't be concerned, as there are methods that work, and I personally think that there is no reason that they wouldn't work in the future as well. All of them really require to find you a two block long space right below the nether ceiling that you can get access to and then make the game place you on that one block of space. There are multiple ways to do it, the simplest is just to use a nether pearl, but you can also use a minecart. Since the ceiling is here one block high and the player is already in the bedrock block in question, they can move freely out of this block and those are some basic vanilla mechanics. Simple way to do it would be to use another ender pearl, a boat, or just place a ladder before in that one block space and just walk up. You can also use levitation from a shulker or just simply make use of a simple jump boost effect. When you are upstairs, by far the most basic way to go down is to use another portal, which will simply take you down home and then back to your nether hub, but there are other ways of doing it as well. If you need more streamlined methods, surprisingly this one still works, which was a method presented by Unaribit back in 1.8, which involved placing a minecart right below the ceiling, another one right on top of it without the rail, and just keep your right click on your mouse pressed while you're zipping through all those minecarts. Since you can connect it very easily with the minecart elevator, this seems like the very good and streamlined way of getting up the top. There's one slight drawback to the solution, no matter how fast you click you will take damage while going through this bedrock bit, but this is also something we can avoid with just a little bit of different design. And that's by using an activator rail. This concept I learned the first time ages ago in one of Panda's 4994 streams, I couldn't find record of it, it might be unlisted at this point, but it was just to use an activator rail. Minecarts on powered activator rails have a very interesting properties in terms of how they eject the entities they carry. If they have space to eject an entity in any of the 8 positions around the rail, they do it by placing an entity 1 block or 2 blocks above the current entity position. Since different mobs have different riding heights, they may end up at different elevations right after being ejected. However, this is not the case if all the ejection spots are blocked. In this case, the minecart always ejects on its own position right above the minecart hitbox, so exactly 0.8 blocks above the base block level. And if we look at places which have the same sizes as players, imagine this was our bedrock layer on top of the nether, their high level is above the block, which means that even when ejected they wouldn't take any suffocation, at least for a few ticks. Now there are some quirky behavior of players trying to jump into a minecart on a powered activator rail, which is likely not an intended behavior but that's interesting how this works, because it allows for some sneaky hidden entrances and interesting elevators. If a player tries to jump into such a minecart, they will get placed back based on the X and Z coordinates of the player location, not the minecarts, and the Y level which is an in combination of minecarts and players Y value. For example, if we approach the minecart from one direction, it will always pull us forward, but if we attempt to access it from the other side, it will be pushing us out. One little side effect of minecart placement is the fact that it always ejects in the middle of the block, which if that's an important thing to be at exact position for some reasons, you can use a minecart to place yourself exactly in the middle of the block. Another interesting side effect of this combined player minecart placement is the fact that we can get into some secret places by right clicking on such a minecart from a predefined location. 
or just build a really weird yet functional player elevator. Now this weird mechanic will not be used in our painless through the bedrock elevator, but will be using the fact that the minecart ejects us on top of itself when you have no places to go. The drawback of this design is that we cannot go straight up, like in the urinary bit design, because the minecart on the activated rail needs to be on a block with a solid surface, so we will be a tiny bit slower, but we won't be taking any damage, so for short distances just to get through bedrock this might be an appealing solution. The core of it is to be able to put a minecart on a powered activator rail one block below the ceiling, with a good access to this block from either of the sides, and there will be typically many locations you can find around the spots you're interested in. For example here I found at least two of them really close to 0, zero. And that's the same for every seed, because the bedrocks are the same. It's always easiest to build these contraptions in the east-west orientation, as rails place naturally this way, but if we need access and we have an open space to the side to redirect the rail, we can also work north-south as well. Now we need to remember the x and z coordinates of the location of the first minecart and then place another minecart on the rail or directly on top of bedrock just above it and secure it so it doesn't slide out. At this point it's all done, but we can use a few more minecarts below and above just to streamline the movement of going through the bedrock. Simplest solution would be to go two blocks each time, is the simplest way to build it, also the slowest way of getting up there, but it gives a sufficient angle to jump through these minecarts unharmed. In this case, just build a short staircase just to jump through the bedrock layer every two blocks leading to and from our bedrock so we don't even notice that we are going through it. But we can do a little better than that, actually almost as good as the straight monkey farm elevator which is to use endrods, and that's something that I can't wrap my head around why this works this way. We can easily change into the other minecart if the other one is two blocks up, but if the minecart is three blocks up we can't really reach it. I mean, we can, because we can see on my chicken the minecart right click consumes my input when I'm pointing at the minecart, but it won't allow me to mount it. The same happens if we put the minecart 3.4 blocks above us. But if we use a sideways end rod, for whatever reason it allows us to click on it. And you can even click it from the side as well to mount it. And then we can have another one, another 3.5 blocks above us. Again, this also needs to sit on an end rod pointing upwards this time, otherwise you won't be able to mount it. In total, comparing to a standard monkey farm elevator, we are losing one block on two hops, so seven blocks per two hops rather than eight but we are getting a way to get through the bedrock unharmed. So that's it, that's simple, that's all there is to it. Regardless of the approach, either the simple two-step design or a faster seven blocks per pair of hops or the full eight with little bit of damage using monkey farm elevator and unary bit bedrock minecart trick, we can leave it either open work like in this case or like in here, still we have to secure all the minecarts in place, so I created this kind of a construct that reminds a little bit of a small bird, yet secures the minecart in place, or like this one in the monkey farm design. Or we can go full solid, especially if you are building it inside the landmass, just make sure that the minecarts can slide out of their spots. So that's it guys for today, a few interesting tricks with minecarts allowing us to get into secret places and face through bedrock. A simple technique that allows to achieve it without taking any damage on the way, as well as a refresher of some previous designs that still work quite well to this day. As usual, the world downloads are in the description so you can check it out in details. In case you guys want to find an answer if we can go through the bedrock down without the need of using a portal and going through the overworld, or learn how to move other entities through the bedrock without breaking it, check other Unarybiz little 1.8 tricks that still work to this day. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting, if you did, don't forget to leave me a like, leave me a comment in the comment section below, subscribe if you are new for more such future content, and see you in the next one, bye bye! Thank you.